eBay Motors is here for the ride. Elbow grease and a whole lot of love transformed 100,000 miles and a body full of rust into a drive entirely its own. LED headlights, spoilers, whatever you need. eBay Motors has it at affordable prices. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride every time. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. If you travel for work, you know to pack two suits, business and swim. You know with your Delta Sky Miles Business Amex card, buying that plane ticket for a business trip can get you closer to medallion status. You know that a meeting in Montana means visiting almost every national park. Yellowstone? Check. Because you're the chief excursion officer. It's why you're a Delta Sky Miles Platinum Business American Express card member. If you travel, you know. Terms apply. Visit go.amex slash you know business. Hello, welcome to CarCast. I'm Matt, the moderator, DeAndre, and I'm here at the SEMA show. We're going to have an exciting episode for you guys, possibly two episodes for you guys, because uh, we have a, a bunch of really wonderful interviews, and we're going to get started right away. We're here with Rick Love from Vintage Air. Rick, you're CEO now of, of Vintage Air? <laughs> President of, of... For now. Yeah. It seems like, I don't know, I, I've been coming here maybe... 17 years uh, you know and i well it is but you've been here every single time it's been a few we're actually laughed and i laugh about that because we were talking about it earlier this week uh the last seam i missed was when my son was born because his birthday is the 30th of october right seam at time yeah i miss it all the time but he just turned 28 this week so the last that was my last uh, I missed. yeah it was 28 years ago so yeah it's been a while yeah so is he in the industry does he come out the SEMA? he works for us at vintage air he works uh, he's an inventory analyst in in purchasing so uh he's he's more of a uh more of an analyst than he is a gearhead in some ways but he we actually put together a 56 ford victoria for him when he was a junior in high school and that was his daily driver for us so he still got it like he just got married a couple of weeks ago and that was their their car for the wedding kind of so he's you know, he, it's funny. He's kind of like a lot of our new customers. He loves that car, but he's just not as mechanical as, as a lot of okay. us to be. Yeah. I mean, he loves the car, and but he'll do basic maintenance, but he's not going to build a car. But that's a, that's a lot of our customer base now. Oh, you know, because the cars, we get to drive and experience a bunch of the new cars. And yes, the technology and the things that are making them more complicated but also the car manufacturers are like, we don't even want you to touch it anymore. Like, stop. You're like, you open a hood, there's nothing to see. It's not even, it's not even that fun anymore. And there are some, some supercars that are out there that you can't even see the engine. And you're like, you're kind of, you're kind of ruining our cars and coffee moment. You know, like you can't open the hood of a McLaren. All you can do is kind of peek over the, the piece of glass and and it is a changing environment, yeah. but you know, it's interesting for you to say that because I think right. that's part of what's driving growth and some of the, what I would call the late model market yeah. a little bit, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s vehicles. And I think the inaccessibility of some of the newer cars and trucks are what's pushing the popularity. And, and even for dra daily driver mode for some of these 70s, 80s cars, I mean, we introduced a gift to the G-Body uh, Monte Carlos yeah. and Regals and stuff a couple of years ago and the kit's becoming very popular I, I have a G-Body, I've got an 87 Monte Carlo, that's my daily driver, I drive it every day and for that for that reason it's, it's simple still, you can yeah. on it you can do all of that and you know, our, our one of our newest kits the ones we're introducing here at SEMA this year is um, the Fox Body Mustang kit, and I mean you're a big Fox Body guy. Yes. Oh wait, who told you that? <laughs> Probably the last ten years yeah, of us talking, yeah. to, uh, talking to each other, exactly. going, "Hey, let's bring Fox Bodies right, right. here." One of the driving courses behind it. So I think we're seeing a lot of guys arriving. Another another kit we're doing is the OBS Chevy right. truck, the '88 to '96 Chevy pickups, and same thing. A lot of guys are using these trucks for daily drivers now, and I think that's part of what's driving this. You know, and it's. Yeah, both of those segments, I think, are great segments because they're they're going to be jumping off points for you guys as well. We've always kind of said on this show that the big brother car drags up the little brother. You know, when when uh, you know the example that Adam Kroll and I've been using for ten years is is the Mercedes going hits one point two million dollars, 
and the 190 used to be 30 grand. Now it's a couple of hundred grand, right? Uh, and now when when Gen 1 Camaros and Mustangs, it, you know, on eBay Marketplace are 35 grand for, a, you know, a mixed number, rusted out hunk of junk. And you're like, well, where do we go from here? And now we've got 80s and 90s Camaros, Mustangs that are that are becoming more interesting. Uh, we brought uh, my 93 Cobra, my red one, I think was out here at SEMA in 2016. So we brought two cars. The red one was out front. And then the other one was the shell that we had with Tokiko. We were showing suspension and a coyote swap with Borla direct, you know, ITBs on it. And and people were even walking past it going, I don't know what that is. What is that, a Honda Accord with a V8? Like, because it didn't have a body on it. It was the shell. And this year, walking around, and there's there's pro touring Fox Mustangs out here. Uh, you guys got this wonderful new kit. And we're seeing more like suspension pieces and billet pieces and hinge pieces and and stuff. So, I, 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 what do you guys get? You guys get just enough demand, enough calls, or do, do you already have sort of a, a sort of a storyboard, if you will, going? Oh, this is where we think in the next five years the kits are going to start to take off. We do. We have a we have a hit list. Yeah. Say you know with the cars that we talk about and, and things we talk about, do it in the future, but. It's interesting. This is such a relationship-driven industry, as you know. You know, we all talk to each other and all of that. It's when you start seeing more parts available for vehicles. That's when, you know, it's kind of that. Is it the chicken or the egg thing? Yeah, is right. There interest first, or are there parts available first to be able to work on these cars and trucks that drives the interest? Yeah, that's kind of the that's kind of the secret sauce, I guess. And when you start seeing more five O or more Fox body Mustang parts available. It drives demand for them, and then that increases popularity, and it kind of starts the ball rolling down the hill. And I think that's the case with all of them. So it is, when you start seeing other companies investing in tooling for replacement fenders or for replacement parts here and there or for trim parts and everything, you got a pretty good indication that there's a lot of interest out there for it. And we do. We talk amongst yeah. ourselves and say, hey, what are your guys getting requests for? What do you see up here and there? And, you know, it helps us talk and... and Every part complements the other. You know, and price point is a factor as well. When we came out here, you know, well, you know, five or six years ago with a car, uh, you know, we reached out to a lot of the companies we work with in the past. People didn't have parts for it yet. And a lot of the conversation was, yeah, we'd like to do something cool. We'd like to do an independent suspension. We'd like to do this. But, but that crowd in particular, right, like, you know, like the OBS trucks and the Fox Mustangs and some of the Camaro, the guys, like – they're not ready for an eight thousand dollar suspension. They're, they want to spend twenty seven hundred bucks, like you know. And I was like, yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, I mean, in in my head, like I kind of lost touch of that because I've been coming to SEMA for so long, and you're just, you know, you can't go ten feet without a roadster shop chassis hitting you in the knee somewhere. And you're like, that's a thirty five thousand dollar chassis before you even build a car on top of it. So it's just kind of a different world when you come to events like this. But the reality is, you got to make parts that kind of fit that price point right so that was kind of the other thing when you guys get into the obs trucks and the fox mustang for example you take you take your core your gen 5 system and you try to make that work uh i would imagine what that helps is is allow you guys to go we can keep the cost reasonable because we use our our gen 5 core across the lineup right like that's module yeah, you know, our new Gen 5 module is, is very similar to an OEM system. It's an injection molded case with injection molded doors and rubber seals and OEM electronic components on it and everything. So, I mean, a lot of what we learned in the parts we used on the Ford GT are parts we're using in our standard Gen 5 module. But you're exactly right. You use a, a common module and then you use accessory parts that we mold to and brackets, obviously, to make it you know, fit a certain vehicle. And that does allow us to keep the cost down. And you talk about, it, you know, we could do a complete AC kit for your trucks or for the box body, it's about $2,200 retail. You know, you start working on your original system, trying to piecemeal a broken part here or a part there. Number one, some of those parts even aren't available. Yeah. And try replacing one or two parts. And it's just before long, a brand new system with a warranty, Modern technology, not forty-year-old technology. Yeah. That makes a whole lot more sense. So that that it's exactly right. So what happens is, is you end up going on to 
you know, eBay or whatever, and you're buying parts and you're getting the knockoff parts and it doesn't really fit right or doesn't work as well. And especially with something with the AC system, like where you just want it to work reliably every day and you don't want to crawl under the dash or redo lines underneath and, you know, another condenser and because the one you got is from overseas, like you got to sort of plan now for uh, a a well-built, a well-designed kit, which is what you guys have been doing for so long. But the other feature that I really like uh, on all of your kits with that use the Gen 5 system is the Mustang, for example, and the OBS Chevy trucks, you you released what's called the SureFit kits, right? So these are meant to be all-inclusive, bolt right in. Yep. But from there, we can kind of select some options. We can, if we want to do some custom work, or if you want to change vents, if we want to change controls, which is a big issue, yep. right? The controls on those vehicles they're big, they're bulky. You make a solution going, this will bolt right in. Right. But now if you want to do a remote control setup or move it to the ashtray or do a custom dash, it's not cables and pulleys. It's all it's all digitally controlled now, right? right? Yeah, it's all fully electronic. You know, no vacuum, no cables, no any of that. So, yeah, we've got a lot of upgrade controls or vents available. Like you said, if you're customizing the dash and changing the car up, we have a lot of options available to do that. If you're just doing a restoration style or you just want a bolt-in system, that's available. Any of the components are available separately. You don't have to buy the full kit. You know, if you've already put a Coyote in and you already have a drive system with a compressor, we don't have to get a compressor and rack it with a system. You can get the parts that you need to make the system work, you know, make the system complete. And it's all designed to work together. It's designed around 134A yeah, instead of R12, like the original system. Right. That's the other thing. <laughs> That's another thing. And another important point you touched on that, you know, in the 80s really is when the OEMs started changing the way they built cars. You know, you, the dash was not part of the car. When they started building, they, it wasn't even called a dash anymore. It's called an instrument panel. And they start assembling that as a whole really as a sub-assembly. Everything bolts to that instrument panel and then that loaded as an assembly into the car. That was great for for OEMs and for their production line because it was fast. Yeah. The downside of it is when you're working on these vehicles, you have to pull the entire instrument panel out of them to do much of anything. So like you say, if you have a, a heater four go bad or you have an AC coil go bad, you got to pull a whole car dash apart. To- yeah. Well, if you're going to do that, it'd be nice to put all new parts in there one time and know you're done. Yeah. You're not going to be doing this again, or you're not going to have to try to make something like you say, a foreign part work or something like that. So I, I think that's a really important point that you did on. Man. I can't tell you how many of these cars and trucks from the 80s are out there, and especially in the Mustang world, you're going to see AC delete. And in their heads, they're all like, it's lighter, it's faster. It's like, no, what happened was it stopped working. Right. You didn't want to fix it. Right. So you said, I'm just going to tear everything out. And now you got to roll your windows down all the time. And it's loud and you're in traffic and you can't breathe and you can't make a phone call. And now there's a a better solution. So I appreciate you guys doing that. A little more comfort oriented than we were 30 years ago. Yeah. At least I am. You know, I mean, yeah, I was. And the, the fact is. A modern compressor now, you're talking five to six horsepower under full mode. Yeah. Okay. And it's way smaller. Way smaller. And lighter. It's easier. They're lighter. Yeah, the whole system is lighter than that old OEM arrangement that was back then, that old OEM system. So, you know, if that five or six horsepower and that little bit of weight, it's just not making the difference. You know, back in the 80s, when your horsepower levels were a whole lot lower, yeah. there was some differences there. But now, if you're doing any kind of engine swap or, or just even... You know, increasing the performance on the stock 5.0, the air conditioning is not going to not. Gonna. Yeah, it's not going to be a huge difference. It's funny in, in the new cars today. Like we'll go out and do press events, and oftentimes they'll invite you out and go. Oh, we're going to go to a track, and right. you're going to you're going to drive the car. You're going to you you know you're going to autocross it, or you're going to get with one of our drivers. When they do that event. The, the windows are up and the air is on the whole time. They're just out there the whole time. Like the cooling system, the efficiency of the AC system, uh, everything is like the car's not overheating. Like, and that's kind of the point. Like, if you had to go out there in a modern day car and go, hey, we got to turn the air off, and then people are like, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to buy that car. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not really for that. That doesn't sound like a lean right. 
Uh, okay, so you guys have, um, we talked about Fox Body Mustang. We have 88 to 94 Chevy and GM OBS trucks. We have 80 to 86 Ford F-Series trucks. Uh, I'm sure you're going to get up into that next tier as my 95 Lightning is sitting in the warehouse. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's on our... It, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the next one. But what else is new for you guys? Because oftentimes you change up things like you know, controls and vents and, and you know, uh, lines and how to make lines easier and, and all of that. Yeah, we have several new control panels. Uh, we just debuted here at SEMA a control panel for a tri-by Chevy for the 56, 55, 56 Chevy. Okay. We've got a 57 panel under development too, electronically controlled panel that's compatible with our systems. Uh, last year, right around SEMA time here, we introduced the third gen Camaro, the, yep. the 92 Camaro system, and, and that's starting to gain some traction too. And... Uh, so that's, that's cool. And yeah, we're we're looking at more of what I would consider to be the newer vehicles. Yeah. The OBS trunks have just, I, I, I first off, when I had to find out what OBS meant when I put it. Right, yeah. OBS. And when they said old body style, I bought one of those trucks brand new. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> body. Yeah. Truck. Well, can we go previous body yeah. style? Like, like. Exactly. <laughs> Trucks are huge right now. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, you know, that Dino's get down is coming up in Phoenix next weekend, and they'll have 5,000 trucks there start to, for a day in it. Yeah. It's amazing. Now, is, is the focus still on pretty much the American-made stuff, or are you guys looking at, like, vintage Land Rover or something, you know, because those guys need it. Oh, they do. I mean, we've had an FJ40 kit for many years. At it. Yeah, okay, that's all right. Yeah, and we've had several guys that we've worked with that have put our systems in the 240, 260Zs, 280Zs, and that's something we're looking at very, very strongly in the future, getting into some SureFit kits for those early Z cars. And, you know, then again, some European cars, you know, the, the three series BMWs, you're getting a lot of guys. Gus, I saw just out front there, there was an old E30 M3 with an LS. In. Yeah. And that's a pretty potent little package. Yeah. And so we're looking at some of that in the future as well. You know, the, the great thing is, I think our, our, what we would consider hot rods or what we would consider, I mean, that, you know, special interest vehicles, that's expanding all the time. I mean, you've always got your muscle cars from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and, and even 80s now. But I, I think what people are seeing, I mean, you saw the, the 190 Mercedes yeah. here that, that, you know. Oh, the one that Tucci's built. Yeah. Yeah. Tucci's Mercedes built that. I was, I, I, the bill. I, was, I was just talking to, to, to Jim and Mike Ring, and they've got a 61 Rolls Royce with an LT4 engine in it. And I know guys like that have are able to call you and say, Hey, you know, it's me again. You know, send me a box of parts. I'll let you know what we're going to use. Right. And the mock-up pieces, and we'll 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 figure out what we want to use, and then we'll send some stuff back, and we'll custom order some stuff. And they've got the time and the 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 paycheck and the <laughs> and uh, uh, and the resources to do it. And it's like like a normal, I mean, normal hot rod guy in the garage. I mean, our. Universal Gen 5 Magnum module is, that's what's in Suji's Mercedes. That's it, what's in yeah. Royce. And, I mean, we send brackets that are pretty universal that the average hot rod guy or the average builder guy can make work. And that's one of the reasons they continue to use those modules is because it is very flexible and very easy to integrate into a long line of vehicle. Yeah. Well, Rick, I, I appreciate it. And uh, I appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today. And it's it's an interesting thing because every car out here has got an AC unit. Uh, almost every car out here probably has your unit. It's like you guys come here every year. You don't get to have the, the sexiest piece. You know, you don't have the, the, the supercharger or the billet wheel or the, you know, the new chassis. But everybody's still got vintage air system. I don't, you know, because it's the most used thing on the car. <laughs> there's something, and it, it's funny, you know, you talk about that. If there's one thing that's not working, if, if, if your horsepower is down just a little bit, you may not notice as much. But, man, if you're, if you're not cool inside the car, that makes a big difference in your You car. stop driving it, right? Like, that's the one that will get you out. Listen, I, I, you know, one of your speakers goes bad. You're like, yeah, hey, I, I can't hear anything on the right side of the vehicle. I can still go where I'm going to go. Right. Right. But if the air doesn't work, you're like, ah, it's just not that comfortable anymore. Right. Especially if you're bringing somebody with you. You're bringing a friend. They're like, 
oh, you were going to drive the, the thing with the windows down and it's too hot or it's too cold or whatever. But Well, you know, where you live, it's cool in the evenings, it's cool in the mornings. Yeah. Now, traffic is so much different than it used to be and all of that. I mean, uh, yeah. With the windows up, you can talk, you can listen to the podcast, you can listen to your music, you can do things. But man, when the windows are down, every time an 18-wheeler or a motorcycle or something comes by you, the wind air, the wind noise and everything, the comfort level has more to do with the air not as much to do with the air temperature, but just that overall Keep it, experience. Keeping the outside world outside, right? right. Isolated. But yeah. you're, abs- you're absolutely right. It's yep. the 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 dirt that gets fl- thrown up, the 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 exhaust, the smell, the just like the noise. It gets to be. Yep. It gets to be a, a bit like you want to hit the canyons and put the windows down or something right. like that. You don't want to do it when you're sitting on the 405 for an hour on your way to the canyons, right? Time and place. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, VintageAir.com is the website, as it always has been. And, uh, you know, if you guys are doing a, a custom project, give them a call. And I'm, I'm sure you guys have yep. a wonderful team that can help you out. Uh, but uh, in lieu of that, I appreciate the uh, the SureFit kits and making things turnkey and easy for us. Enjoyed the visit as always, Matt. Thank- Thanks so much. <laughs> um, we're here at the Hellig booth with Melanie Hellig White. Is this maybe just Melanie White now? I don't know. Yeah, I, I go by both. Yeah, yeah. I, it's kind of on the. Oh. It's kind of yeah, yeah. Kind of like, yeah, and I think you know I'm 51 percent owner now, so I like to like bring it in there. It's funny though when I was a kid, I hated uh, Hellwig because you can make fun of kids quite a bit, right? Like you look for anything, and like Hellwig, I was like, man, I can't wait to get rid of that. But now I want it back a little bit, right? Like so, I went to like white. Like my husband has a you know white. It's kind of a I mean, sorry if you're white, but a boring last name. And I was like, I want a boring last name. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but now you're like 51% back in control of the family business. So I want it back. Yo, listen, <laughs> about the ownership of this, I need at least 51%. A name. Yeah, totally. <laughs> a name. That, yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. All right, so explain what Hellwig is for for people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Hellwig is a suspension manufacturer. We've been doing it for 77 years. So my great grandfather started the company back in 1946 with my grandpa. So they actually started it together. They would um, manufacture products at night and then they would go door to door on the weekends and sell the products. It's super easy to know if you need Hellwig because the vehicle's sagging. So the vehicle was sagging. My great grandfather would go up to the door, would sell the product and my grandpa would lay on the ground. He was 18 at the time um, in their driveway, install the product and they would do this all like product, installation, everything for $7. (laughs) We don't have that price point or that distribution model anymore. <laughs> Could you imagine if you had to sell that way? Like, I know. Knocks on my door. <laughs> Let's hide, hide. <laughs> I know. I know. Me too. I know. And that's like how they got started. Yeah. Is there? Is it the Amazon package? If it's not, then out. Oh, new one. This guy was like pretty high. Get in the Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And it could have been my grandpa. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, a, a lot of it was leveling kits and stuff at the time. So, if you yeah. trucks and... Uh, actually, it was like passenger cars because that was all that was in the market at the time. So, it was only passenger cars. These were towing. They would tow with them. They would camp with them. They were like the original overlanders. So, they they overloaded them for sure. So, uh, um, so we did helper spring that for them to bring them back up to level load height. So we have a no saggy bottoms policy. So anytime the vehicle sagging, we can fix that. And then the other part is that we also have sway control. So um, as the vehicle, um, you know, as you load up your vehicle, it gets a little wiggly in the back end and we can fix that too. So we um, we really like to fix problems like that. Um, and when I was driving here, I could see everyone's wiggly back end. And I'm like, I feel like I have this like, um, mission to like fix all of that, right? I want to like everyone should have a solid rear, and I might need to think about saying that differently next time. But oh. I think it's perfect. Oh. So, one of the other podcasts that we do, Ship this here with Aaron Fagan. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Aaron has the well, Jeep Gladiator, yeah, Bobby. Yeah, okay. Built his incredible overlanding rig. It's here at South Front of Central Hall. Awesome. 
and he just did 10,000 miles, uh, a six week trip to from Lake Tahoe to Alaska. Oh, that's amazing. Like Cam for six weeks in his vehicle. She is a good sport. Yeah. <laughs> and he came home, she's like, I could do this all the time. She's like, I'm really impressed that we're home. Yeah. I mean, Alaska and that kind of trip is amazing, right? I don't blame her on that part. And then yeah. they met up with different people and got in different groups and they're off the group. Oh my goodness. And every once in a while, they, you know, they'll, they'll crash in a motel, but for the most part, yeah. just, they were in an Alu cab on the top of the Jeep. That's amazing. But after hearing him talk about that now that he's back home first of all the 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 rig is amazing because you really get to see how personal it is yes Just every little bits and pieces like where you store an energy bar to the communications device mm -hmm. talk who's in water and yeah how much heater do you need yep you know you're reading a magazine you're like i need a little heater because it gets cold but how much do you really need yep. like or is it not enough yeah so it's a very, very lived-in vehicle. That's awesome. He brought it back, cracking the windshield, bugs all over it. That's awesome. Move it here. Perfect. We thought about doing that because we did a trip too. Um, yeah. Not as crazy as that, but I seem we wanted to come dirty, like because we we really use it, yeah. right? We want to show that like it's legit. So he's legit. So coming back, he's he, now he knows he's like. Uh, how the vehicle handles like i don't know ask me some some questions like is this a shock issue is it a sway bar issue is it a spring issue you know i've got a lot of weight yeah weight keeps going up higher and higher in the vehicle yeah lady vehicles they just stack yep uh, and so it's not just the towing and the work vehicles like yeah especially since so coat and overlighting yeah yeah totally it's getting tons of calls mm -hmm. a few people going hey i'm yeah. Going off road, but now my my rig drives like shit on this trip. They do. It drives terrible. Yeah, it does. And I think that, so the answer is yes. Is it shocks? Is it sway bar, right? Like, so it's both, right? So, like, sway bars and uh, shocks both have their place. And if you, if you try to have the shocks do what the sway bar should be doing, then you get it like way too rough of a ride. Like, and then it, that ride's like, should, like it just like, it's not fun, right? So a sway bar um, will allow the shock to be a little bit more um, loose. I'm sure there's a more technical way to say that, but like um, it, it doesn't have to be like tightened up so much. And the, so the sway bar will do the work it needs to do and then the shock can come in when it needs to. Um, but really, like, the, the sway bar is acting as a counter lever. Um, so as pressure wants to be put on one tire and all the pressure, when you have it up super high, it all wants to go, right? It, it wants to join the party over there. What the sway bar does is, like, push it to the other side with that counter lever. So, yeah. And then the shocks can do their little dance, too. It's like the motorcycle racing with the sidecar. Have you seen that? And the yeah. side hack does. Yeah. That guy that rides in the side hack, um, I think he's called the monkey. Yeah. And, yeah. And he's just moving way around. Are you calling me a monkey? <laughs> or my product? <laughs> the, your sway bar is the monkey. Yeah, yeah. Your sway bar is the monkey. I, can I be the driver? <laughs> okay, and then, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what are some of the new products? It's... it's, it's yeah. Vehicle fibbing. Yeah. So I, we have products here um, really to show we have our Tesla Model Y sway bar front and rear here. So we um, we brought that because people always think about us in truck and tow and all of that. But we make a huge I always like people wonder, do you make more products? And it's like we don't make more products, but our product line is super wide. So we do anything from like a side by side all the way up to some military applications. And then so we wanted to come and show like we do Tesla. Um, we have a lightning bar we have um the new bronco bar um we're gonna have the gen 3 raptor here released pretty soon so we're doing all these different things that aren't necessarily only in that like uh tow and haul world that people usually know us for well you were doing some automotive stuff i'm not sure if you still have some of yep. the product yeah but i might our <clears throat> three mustang has a rear bumper on it thank you yeah yeah hopefully you love it <laughs> yeah I haven't driven it yet for the project for a year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Or, yeah. Hey, is that Melody's monkey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so what's uh, what's next for you guys? Well, for you, 
taken on a new role at SEMA. You've been very yeah. at SEMA for a long time, but now you're yeah. new chairman. Yeah. So that's, if you're like chairman. And I'm chair elect right now. Um, and I'll start in a couple years. So I'm watching uh, the current chair, Kyle, do all of the work, right? Like having to get on stage, do all of that. And, and I'm thinking, oh, man, that's going to be me in a few years, right? Um, but it's not me right now. And um, I still have my day job here, like as CEO. So I'm, um, someone was joking with me of like, uh, you get your second job or your, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's so much fun. I really love, like, um, my family was at the, the first SEMA show. And so we've been members for a really long time. And uh, I see it a lot. Like, there's so much happening in this space. Uh, and we got to protect our right to modify vehicles. And I feel super strongly about that. Like, in Sacramento, there's a lot. I know I, I know we're, we've been working on it, but there's been a law that you can't work on your own car in your own driveway, which is freaking, it's ridiculous, right? And our, a lot of our products are DIY. A lot of all of the other products here are DIY. And if we lose that ability to like modify our vehicle, do it ourselves, like it's, it just narrows like what we can do. And like, we're, we love our cars here in the States, right? I mean, I, I think Ant um, was on stage earlier this week um, talking about like, he moved here because he loves our car culture, right? So it's like, yeah, like we need to s protect that. and. I have a son. I don't know if he wants to get in the business, right? But I have that mindset of like, I want him and future generations to be able to have that. But if we don't protect it now, it's gonna, um, it has the potential to go away. Yeah, we, so we've covered that on, on the podcast of the past. One of the, I don't remember if it was here, the car cast and shift and series of Biden and both it. Yes, not being able to even work on some of your own. Oh, yeah. The, organizations like SEMA to yep. at least point us in the right direction. If we want to fight for it, how do we do it? Uh, yeah, we do need an advocate for that. We need someone to help us. Yeah. By the way, that's a crazy rule. During the COVID lockdown, was oh, every oh my gosh, everyone, yeah, like every everyone. Well, you were all like trying to like avoid each other, right? So someone was in the garage, or like, yeah, you're working. It, no, so yeah, it works delivered. Yes, it's, that's where I'm. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do it now. It's, totally. But yeah. Every part of this building was DIY. Yes, 100%. And I think that's also when we look at like who's here. I mean, how is a small business? But a lot of the people here too are small businesses. Like SEMA has one of, like the SEMA show itself is like one of the biggest gatherings of small businesses. Yeah. And so none of us have on our own the ability to like fight or like push back, right? Like, so we need an organization like SEMA to bring us together to protect our rights. Like, and that to me is like really exciting about what we can do and make a difference. And like, you know, I'm protecting Helwig, but also like a lot of the other um, aftermarket companies, small businesses here. And that gets me really excited and is worth the second job. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're doing it. Yeah, thank you. We've known each other a long time. I know. You're very, very active in the space. So oh. the pens, me, so just like lovely. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so the website is Hellwig. Hellwigproducts.com. Yep, and it's hell like H E L L W I G products.com. All right, there you go. Uh, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your week. Awesome. Thank you. All right, now we're in the uh, Ride Tech booth. Booth. Wow, it's been a, been a long day with uh, Blaine Burnett. But how are you? Good, man. It's good to see you. Been a, been a while. It's uh, it's it's been a little bit, but it's. So far, so good. I mean, SEMA's been fantastic. It seems like you guys are getting a lot of traffic. And, uh, you know, we've been following you guys for a long time, been friends with, with, with Brett before, uh, before he sold the company and, and went on to a lovely retirement. <laughs> He's having, I mean, he was having fun before, but he seems to be having a great time, having a great time now. Um, just bringing everyone up to speed. Tell us a little bit about what what Ride Tech is and how would you how would you explain it? Because listen, when Ride Tech back in the day was Ride Air and it was an air ride company, and then really evolved into suspension. But how would you guys yeah, so, so explain it? Technologies um, came out. It says more or evolved into into Ride Tech, and, and that's great. I said not getting away from our roots. Uh, we still do air ride. Oh sure, but we also a conventional bow over uh, suspension as well and shocks. So. Uh, they're kind of something for everybody, and when it comes to Shui Raz and Usapars, Crokes Roaring, 
uh, and also in late ball performance as well. So uh, you, you mentioned Brett and, and what he built. Uh, you yeah, know, like then when he turned that into all with his health, um, and then and then with Fox Technology getting involved back in 2010, and then ultimately their acquisition of the company as well. Um, we're all here for some success on on continuing that that business model. So. Uh, we got a number of new products at the booth this week. 90% of what we have in here is, is new for this year. And uh, and so I can give you a little bit of a rundown on it. Like. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. So uh, so last year, we've got this too, but we uh, we had our uh, SLA or short and on kit for Mustang box bodies. Yes. And uh, and that was pretty awesome because that brought a lot of updated changes to funding of those cars, allowing them to uh, to and left and bite a little bit better, right? Um, this year, we're incorporating our fold-in IRS system for Fox Bodies. Um, that is a huge upgrade when it comes to you know, geometry. Uh, yeah. And you know, giving you all the benefits of a multi-link suspension uh, that you would want. Uh, obviously, we're going to talk to you drag race deer, uh, which is what a lot of Fox Body Mustangs are, are using. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I mean, you're talking uh, IRS, this is a bolt-in cradle. And it incorporates uh, S550 uh, Mustang rear end. Uh, you can get those out of a junkyard or on one brand new. Um, and then it also incorporates uh, a shortened axis assembly and then it adapts to uh, S550 Cubs. So your, your S550 brakes and cow work. So we came by here last year and, and uh, I think we chatted for a minute. You showed me the front suspension and the rear suspension was on the way, but it was also interesting because the you know the the fox mustang platform has been around for for a while now and a lot of suspension components have come out and doing something like the four link or going to a three link with a torque arm it, it works it's a it's a configuration that works but it really has just been done before, right? So you don't want to come out with the same exact thing. I was one of our engineers yesterday, Will. Um, he, he was talking about how you know you could take the old uh, the Cobra IRS, yeah, and use that in the Foxes with yeah little effort. I have one. I I have a. Uh, there are certain certain detractors for that as well. Yeah, you've got you've got some areas that limit tire width that you can use. You're right. As a result of that, uh, due to the design of that system and it not being meant to go in a Fox body inherently. So um, we've improved upon uh, some of those things, and, and the whole system weighs around. Uh, I think they're shooting for around 320 ish pounds. That's what we have right there. Actually, uh, I was telling me that yesterday, and uh, and so that. That's an unsprung weight. It's a little bit more than a, than a full, you know, uh, liver axle or horse, but at the same time, that puts that weight towards the rear. Yeah. You use the, the short lawnmower and assembly as well. You're, you're actually dropping some weight off the front of the car, too, um, which, is, which is also alpha. So, Because I was thinking about that. I was going to ask what it weighs, and adding a little bit of weight to the rear is not the worst thing in the world. Like, we're already trying to shift. There's so much of the weight. I don't know what it is, like 58% on, on the nose with the conventional iron block, iron heads. So cutting some of that weight in the front and adding some to the rear, because the, the cars can definitely use some traction uh, uh, with, with the amount of horsepower that everybody's making in those cars. Um, it's a it's a fantastic setup. I'll, I'll I'll post some pictures so you guys can kind of see this thing, and I'm sure it's going to start to pop up all over social media. Yeah, and, and I know we're really talking about Fox Mustangs here, but this has been an interesting year for that because I've been walking around and and you know I we need a lot of well we're, we're not a lot of cars yet, but we're seeing the parts come up. So we we brought cars out here years ago um, in like 2016, and there there wasn't a lot, but the price point of, of parts was was low and like what people were willing to spend was you know still pretty pretty low compared to a lot of the aftermarket companies and what they can have available right so um but now that has changed we're starting to see some pro touring cars and some pretty nice builds happening and uh, uh, people investing more money into that Fox platform, as we've said many times before, that the you know the Gen One Camaros and the Mustangs are all getting so expensive, even for for junk, <laughs> you know that you just can't really get them. It is. Uh, but getting this system, this rear suspension to work, uh, it was it was such a great idea, and I think it's such a smart idea and a different option completely from what else is out there. And yes, I have a, another project car that we brought here. 
um, sort of a unibody shell with a 2003 Cobra IRS in it. And yeah, it's a little wide, so you got to do a different offset for the wheel, and it doesn't, you, you can't get a very wide tire underneath it. Um, and the lower control arm is made for a conventional spring, but it, it only works with a with a coilover, basically. So you, you're kind of stuck with this giant spring perch, basically, on the system. And it's okay. It works, right? But it's not... It's the job done. However, you know... Uh, but that was the only solution out there, was to swap a, a Cobra kit into it. So now... In March of, of the Q1 2024, you'll have a a $4,500 option. Um, and, and while that might be more expensive, maybe you can get a Terminator, you know, a version of that for, uh, the, you know, this retains factory track width. It allows for many tubs. It lowers your roll center by five inches. Uh, zero bump steer. And it works with our coilovers or shockwave uh, air ride. So, it's, uh, and you've also got some camber gain engineered into it as well. So, um, Zen Geo, but sure you this. And then the front suspension, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, that SLA kit, that would, works on the factory car, but also works with most aftermarket K-members. So if you did a swap with, like, uh, you know, Maximum yeah, Maximum Motorsports or, you know, UPR, QA1, like, you can, you can make it work with those. So, because I have, for example, I, a, a, a common modification was taking the quicker ratio the Terminator steering rack, you know, the 2 3 and putting it in those cars for better better steering. But now we're kind of running out of those. Um, and a lot of the rebuilt ones that you find uh, on eBay or whatever are rebuilt with stock components. So somebody's taking a Cobra rack and basically making it stock and then selling it as a Cobra rack, but yeah. it's not really working, <laughs> right? So I went with, uh, you know, a, a completely ground up new uh, steering rack with from Flaming River, right? And we got, this was years ago in Maximum Motorsports, we, we test fitted it, we made a few modifications and went back to them and now they make a, a K member that works with that rack. So if you don't want to get an old one, you can get a brand new, you know, high performance, quick ratio steering rack from Flaming River that works with their K members. Um, so using your suspension with that, uh, would not out our any capabilities there. Right. It would be a great combination of putting all that together. Don't not make this upgrade, but you're wanting this too. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, cool stuff. And now I see over in the back corner, we've also got uh, late model Mustang stuff. The the so twenty what fifteen and, and above. Basically, let's be your your uh, S550 um, uh, platform. Um, so we've got some um, newly newly. It's a new look, honestly, um, from the conventional uh, clear coated like clear metal looking flowovers that we're known for, and the hyperco springs. Well, the, the hyperco still look the same, but uh, we've got like a Type Three anodized like hard coat, like okay, shock or strut bodies, and uh, those look really good. But uh, they're rebound adjustable, uh, monocube strut design, so nothing surprising there from from what we've been doing already, Kyle Eipel. Um, those allow for up to eight and a half degrees there, uh, of camber adjustment, up to four and a half degrees. Uh, excuse me, that was eight and a half for the positive camber and four and a quarter degrees of negative camber. And then they also have like a brand new um, top mounting system. Um, if you're familiar with uh, the term like a pillow ball mount, yeah, like very, it's, it's metal to metal. There's, there's nothing in between, which is what you want, like on a track car, right? But when you're talking about something that's going to be doing double duty, you know, right, going to get groceries, going to the track, but you know, also something you may daily drive from time to time. Um, you don't want a coal over system super loud. And so they've developed an integrated rubber mill uh, that reduces deflection and creates minimal MVH release, uh, which is super fluid. So it's a very, very much. Bang kind of having your cake and eating it see with a full over system yeah I, I looked at it it's a pretty nice it's a pretty nice setup and it, you know when you can get a front and rear setup so you can really kind of dial in the car the way you want and I, I imagine uh you guys have thoughts on spring rates but maybe there's there's a couple of options when it comes to that as well yeah 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 um we've got uh we've got a basically a calculator you can use on the website you provide us some information and we can either tell you what you need to have now, and then this solution is for cars that don't have MagnaRide. 
Sorry? Th this is for cars that don't have the Magnaride yeah. suspension, yeah. right? But, uh, yeah, they, they are blood on this is all nut. Yeah. Which is required. Um, and then, you know, of course, on the air ride side, too, harkening back to what we're known for on the air ride technology side, uh, we've got with the shop. Right. So you can you can bag the car if you wanted to. Um, truck market has always been big for you guys and mostly in the street performance side of the trucks not really the off-road side of the trucks which actually i'm more of a fan of uh, uh yeah me too actually. <laughs> yeah, uh, something about taking uh taking a truck and putting a bunch of suspension travel on it 37 inch tires and, and just bombing through the desert or something like that yeah uh yeah uh, a lot of lot of on 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 road street performance stuff as well and uh this year we've got a 2019 to 2023 ran 1500 lowering kit. And it's the cool thing about that is, um, outside of what it does, it's available for both two-day drive and full day. Okay. So, uh, um, strut drops it anywhere to from under three inches uh, with a buffet. You can do a rear up to three to four inches, and that's a direct place of the factory size. And so it was. Uh, comes with our Trigon arms to correct camber and ball joint angles. When you're adjusting the spins and geometry like that, you need that as a so I need that adjustability and get data down free. And um, the, the shocks uh, equal over to Rebound Festival as well. And that's our H2 series, all the cheek seeing to be track stuff. Okay. And hard bars included. Uh, so we send your axle for the drop. And uh, don't tell me control arm mounts um, to, to maintain your optimal ever. Can you? Uh, and you can as the other career stuff. Thing. And then we also sell some rear strong arms with uh, they call it a large lines, man, that are at and uh and that's online on the website now uh keep up the pulp numbers for two different you know drive things to yeah i will drive it with you that uh the kid looks fantastic um and uh is it's, it's interesting because you guys are doing the new stuff like s550 and the ram which is the late model stuff and those cars are getting more complicated lowering them because we have ride height sensors there's cameras on the cars like that has to give a little bit of thought into how all that stuff's going to uh, how it's going to work and i don't know what the solution is going to be that i'm sure you guys are working on but there's going to have to be some sort of calibration or computer programming and ride height adjusters and and yeah everything is going to have a, a thing at some point um getting into uh well, friend, kind of the theme for a SEMA this uh, this year seems to be 80s and 90s stuff. Like we're seeing a lot of OBS trucks. We're seeing 80s, 90s Camaros and Mustangs and a lot of parts and stuff uh, for those. Uh, on the on the OBS truck side, you guys are, uh, I'm pretty sure you've had kits for 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 Chevy and stuff for a while. Um, I don't think anything for the Ford yet because the Ford is is the complicated twin I-beam. You'd have to really just start from scratch and bolt up to the frame. But uh, I don't know. Have you guys got any uh, OBS Fords around the shop that people are scratching their heads, putting it up on the left going, uh, what, are, what are we going to do here? The <laughs> King College is not the only thing at the moment. And Edison, we just needed that if you want to or not. But I'm just saying I don't have any of the riches uh, at the moment. But uh yeah, that's that's something that that definitely needs some attention and for sure. Right, market was I believe was not even, that's fine on the off road side to keep that and just beef that up. But the coast one, the slamish rocket, is of that nature. Uh, there's there definitely needs more work. Some more felt part of it. Um, air ride, we have solutions uh, mm -hmm. on a lot of those trucks, but uh, there is there is a gap missing within what we are able to support on the foot side. Yeah. Uh, so what's next for you guys? Well, on, on, on like the LX platform, like Stellantis type stuff, Dodge. Yeah, right. Chrysler, whatever you want to call it. Um, we've got the LX uh, performance boiler and shock system. So, and that covers Charger, uh, Challenger, Magnum, mm -hmm. with everything to see if you're so inclined. And those allow a drop from one to three inches, um, rebound adjustability, of course. And that obviously offers you the handling that comes with Following the call, reducing the center of gravity, and uh, trying to maintain as much ride quality as possible as well. So, uh, we have air suspension for the LX platform as well. So, so whatever your flavor is, uh, whether it's on track or whether you're more show focused, uh, we've got we've got some instance for you there. And then, one of the things that we actually almost uh, we got runner up uh, for our best engineered products uh, on the street performance side of things. Okay. Uh, this this week is what we're looking at here is a AFX pullback nut spindle. 
Uh, with the guys to, with the old school A body, F body, or X body, um, you're one the the pros you were in that thing out, get it ready for some auto classes, maybe some Optima events or something like that. Right. Um, these are going to be helpful because they, they lower the vehicle two inches, but they also allow you to install a C5, C6, or C7 uh, on the spindle. Okay. Uh, the hub. And, uh, and that improves your, your, due to the weight of their design, negative camber gain and uh, well center improved dog. But then you get the bottom brake hit and, and maybe wheel and tire package if you wanted to, right? Yep, yep. absolutely. And, uh, and wheel and tire also depend on, of course, the, the body you've got installed. Yeah. Or those that whatever mop in <laughs> the, to make at first. But uh, yeah, and and they maintain the stock track widths and they're, they're 100% made if you're in the States. I mean, you, you, you mentioned the Optima Challenge and I'm just watching how sophisticated that's gotten over the years when it just started off as kind of a, an invitation thing and you know like uh, on, on tv and uh goldberg was hosting it you know our our, our co-host here was hosting it back in the day now it's just evolved into you know uh, abs brakes on gen one camaros and and uh, guys are running multiple tunes depending on which obstacle they're doing, which event they're doing. They're running a different, a completely different, for the auto uh, yeah, completely different engine tune. And I was talking to someone saying they run, I think, a supercharged car, and then one of the events they run it naturally aspirated. There's a completely different tune, and they pull the belt off, and they're just able to accomplish it quicker. And then, <laughs> yeah, I think that's just taking uh, something that's meant to be fun very serious. And they're taking it very seriously, right? Uh, so the, the, the suspension, they, these guys have to be coming to you at some point going, I, oh, what are we doing with like cockpit adjustable suspension? And I know it's something that Ride Tech has dabbled in, in in the past, but I don't know if it just was too expensive or uh, just never really took off with the customer. Uh, but it seems like something that's going to come back around. What are your thoughts on that? Having some sort of electronically controlled suspension from the from the cockpit. Four. Um, obviously, I'm relatively near gear, uh, so I can't speak to it with any with any high degree of specificity. Well, uh, for my knowledge, but um, yeah, I mean, all of that is is becoming more integrated. Integration. Yeah. Technology is becoming more and more T. So. Um, yeah, I think I think that's going to be more pervasive in our industry as I help it as as the year. I mean, because we're getting so many cars are just being delivered from the factory, especially anything high performance, anything sports cars is being delivered from the factory with completely adjustable suspension. Like you, you just go buy a new Mustang right now, and and you know, it, and you you get steering feedback, shock feedback. You can you know, and I mean they. They try to make it easy and take some of the guesswork out of you, out of it for you. So uh, that would be one of the obstacles is like, how do you make it simple for the customer or how do you make it complex for that Optima Challenge competitor, <laughs> you know, and say, you know, how do we start to dial it in, uh, you know, depending on what you're doing, a, a street tune, if you will, and then a track tune, you know, but now for the suspension, not just the engine. So anyway... It's gonna be some interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah. You're guessing as good as bad. <laughs> uh, the OE of today is is not like the OE of, of yesteryear. So like the back in the box body days. Yeah. Even recently, um, they're they're really ramping up on some of the things that paper ball those pretty impressive to see. Um, and it makes our job a little bit harder uh, to to include the fun, but that's the channel. That I, I yeah, that's it. Push the envelope though, right? It gets to uh, uh, challenge you guys and and continue to innovate and come up with some new cool cool stuff. See the way. Speaking of cool stuff, you know the the IRS kit, the SLA system, and you're dropping it out the floor. We've got a yeah. Mustang we're building uh, that we did campaigning in 2024. Get out to some events and things like that. Yeah. Uh, Fox Body, obviously, and uh, we can't wait to debut that, show it off. Uh, but trying to figure out what we want it to, to look like visually yeah uh, i'm thinking back to those old like trans am days okay uh maybe he's maybe spoofing off one of those liveries that is really popular and uh giving a nod back to, to yeah old school way i i tell you a, a cool a cool car uh to kind of emulate is uh willie t ribs uh motorcraft trans am car yes. Um, the white with the big motorcraft on the side and Willie's such a great Willie's here at SEMA someplace and and we we did a documentary with him so uh, uh, he's he's a good dude yeah yeah uh, uppity the Willie's here rib story so um, 
Thank you. Uh, and every time now when we see that car, like up in Monterey or something pop up, we're like, you know what? That's just a cool looking car. It's just a really good. Uh, so maybe something like that. And you can take that Motocraft logo that's on the side, replicate the font and everything and just have it say Ride Tech. And I bet it, you could pull it off and make it really, really work. Just yeah. That's 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 fun. I'd like a seat. <laughs> yeah, not not that I need to sit here and design your car for you, but no. <laughs> yeah, had to resonate well too with a lot of the old school like '80s and '90s vibe. Like we were just starting to see. It. Yeah, scroll through Instagram about seeing editing like cyberpunk type stuff pop. Right, right. Uh, video games and then the same. I, I look, it's really interesting. I, you, you guys go down and you do one of your events. You do a good guys event or an autocross event down in Texas. You should definitely fire out an invitation to Willie and have him get behind the wheel of that car for a minute and see what you think. You know, because he is a hoot. He, you'd love just chatting with him and uh, get him excited about maybe doing a few doing a few laps out there. Yeah, that would be fun as hell. <laughs> I absolutely, we could do that. Yeah, I think that would be fun to do. No. Uh, Blaine, thanks so much. You guys are, uh, uh, are always crushing it. We love what you're doing out here. It's a great presentation. Continue to have a good SEMA. Awesome, man. Likewise. Well, that wraps up the first day of SEMA. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. We have uh, another interview with the Ring Brothers, but because that was uh, a much longer interview with just those guys, we will do a separate episode for that next week. So tune in next week for the Ring Brothers. Until next time, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com.